sigma processing today we will start chapter number 6 lecture number 19 structures for discrete time systems so let's get started in today's lecture we will talk about the implementation of discrete time structures we'll talk about the direct forms direct form 1 direct form 2 we'll talk about the basic building blocks of structures and we'll talk about why we need these structures so in previous chapter chapter number 5 and chapter number 3 we have seen that if there is an LTI system it is completely characterized by its impulse response its system function and difference equation so when we have to practically or physically implement this discrete time system we will need some hardware so for that hardware we need some sort of algorithm or structure that can be realized in desired technology so in this chapter we will use difference equation and system function to implement such an algorithm so the basic operations of discrete time structures are addition multiplication and delay so as you can see we have a system function we can use all the forms we can use system function we can use impulse response and we can use difference equation to implement the structures so for example in equation 6.1 we have a system function h of c is equal to b naught plus b1 c inverse divided by 1 minus a c inverse so if we have to implement this filter or in a digital hardware we need some sort of algorithm so for that algorithm we have structures we have different forms direct form 1 and direct form 2 so let's get started how we can implement this h of c what are the basic operations that we need to implement this h of c so you can see here in this equation that we have b naught b1 a these are the coefficients for that coefficients we need multipliers and then you can see we have addition and subtraction for these purpose we need addition operation and finally you can see we have z inverse so for that we need delays or memory elements so let's move on to next slide and see how a structure looks like so if if i convert the previous h of c into impulse response i would need to take the inverse z transform and using the inspection method i can say h of n is equal to b naught a raised power n u of n on the basis of the region of convergence it's a right sided signal so that's why we have u of n plus b1 a raised to power n minus 1 u of n minus 1 so this is the impulse response of equation 6.1 and this is the first order difference equation this is the first order difference equation because it has a delay of z raised power minus 1 and likewise i can i can convert this h of z into difference equation so simply converting h of z into y of c divided by x of c and then cross multiplying you will get y of n minus a y of n minus 1 is equal to b naught x of n plus b1 x of n minus 1 so you can see the maximum delay is minus 1 so this is a first order system however this is an infinite duration impulse response because it has delays in output and it is also clear from h of z that it has poles other than zero so we can see from the impulse response we can see from the difference equation and we can see from the system function that it is a IIR system or infinite impulse response so it is very difficult to implement this or it is almost impossible to implement this system using the discrete convolution so we can rewrite the equation 6.3 in the form 6.4 so y of n is equal to a y of n minus 1 plus b naught x of n plus b1 x of n minus 1 so we need the previous output that is y of n minus 1 should be multiplied with a constant plus b naught x of n so the input will be multiplied with the b naught coefficient plus delay of input will be multiplied by 
b1 so we have the system function h of z is equal to b0 plus b1 z inverse divided by 1 minus a z inverse so if you simply cross multiply y of z is equal to b0 plus b1 z inverse 1 minus a z inverse you will get y of z b0 plus sorry y of z plus y of z a z inverse with a negative sign here is equal to x of z b0 plus x of z b1 z inverse now taking the inverse y of z inverse will be y of n minus a into y of n minus 1 is equal to x of n with b0 plus b1 x of n minus 1 so this is the same equation as this okay so rearranging you will get 6.4 now if you want to get the impulse response you can easily get the impulse response from h of c by simply inspection method so what we have to do we can write h of c like h of z is equal to b naught divided by 1 minus a z inverse plus b1 z inverse divided by 1 minus a z inverse we know the inverse z transform of this is b naught scaling a raised for n u of n plus for this one we have same but we have delay here so b1 a raised for n minus 1 and u of n minus 1 so this is the impulse response this is h of n which is equation number 6.2 so we can convert an LTI system either in impulse response either in difference equation and then we can implement these structures so let's move on to next slide so this is the block diagram representation of linear constant coefficient difference equation so in figure 6.1 a you can see if we have to add two signals x1 and x2 we can use such kind of a addition if we have to multiply or x of n we can use this representation kind of a gain and then finally if you need a unit delay we can use this z raised point minus 1 block these are the basic components that will be used in order to implement a discrete time structure using the difference equation okay so let's move on to next slide so here's the second order system that is given in the form of difference equation so we have y of n is equal to a1 y of n minus 1 plus a2 y of n minus 2 plus b naught x of n and the corresponding system function is h of c so how we can get this just simply take the z transform of this equation we will get y of c is equal to a y a1 y of z z inverse plus a2 y of z z raised power minus 2 plus b naught x of z now combining y of z's on one side y of z we will get 1 minus a1 z inverse minus a2 z raised power minus 2 is equal to b naught x of z we know that system function is equal to y of z divided by x of z this is equal to h of z so we have b naught divided by 1 minus a1 z inverse minus a2 z in z2 so this is the corresponding system function so the block diagram representation of such a system either you can use 
this difference equation or you can use h of c depending upon your understanding so if we look at the difference equation so x of n is multiplied by b naught so this is the multiplication then it is added with y of n minus 1 and y of n minus 2 so we have y of n here first of all we will delay y of n we have delayed it we will get y of n minus 1 then y of n is multiplied by x a1 and we further delay it to get y of n minus 2 and we will multiply it with a2 at this point we will add these two and finally we will add b naught x of n to get y of n okay so this system can be implemented either on a general purpose computer or a digital signal processing chip or you can use some sort of VLSI technology so this block diagram basically tells you what kind of a hardware you need in order to implement this system so this is the block diagram representation of a difference equation of the form equation 6.5 so if you look at h of z so these are the zeros and these are basically the poles or you can say the coefficients of numerator or coefficients of denominator coefficients of denominator tells you about output so this is z inverse multiplied with a this is z raised power minus 2 because this is one delay and followed by second delay z raised power minus 2 multiplied by a2 and then we are adding these so if we have a negative sign here we will use positive here if we have a positive sign here we will use negative so you need to understand or otherwise you can always convert h of z into difference equation and you can use the same sign okay so let's move on to next slide and let's talk about the difference uh, df1 form direct form 1 so the generalized form of difference equation is y of n minus summation k is equal to 1 to n a k y of n minus k is equal to k is k equal to 0 till m b k x of n minus k so we have taken this form from this summation k is equal to 0 till n a k y of n minus k as i have told you that sum of all the outputs is equal to sum of all the inputs and delays bk x of n minus k now just take out the first term here we will get y of n then minus a k y of n minus k and then the rest of the thing so this is the generalized form of difference equation where the order of output is n and where the order of input is m now if i convert this difference equation general difference equation to general system function i just have to take the z transform of this equation 6.7 so if you take the z term of transform of equation 6.7 it will become y of z minus summation a k y of z z raised power minus k k is equal to 1 to n now equal to i don't have space so i will write here summation b k x of z z raised power minus k k is equal to 1 0 to m now taking y of z common and x of z common so if i take y of z common i will get y of z 1 minus summation k is equal to 1 to n a k z raised to power minus k and now taking x of z common i will get x of z summation b k z raised to power minus k k is equal to 0 to m now writing y of z divided by x of z i will get this equation 6.8 so this is the general difference equation its corresponding system function of general form is this now 
this is the original difference equation where sum of all the inputs is equal to sum of all the outputs scaling at input scaling at input delay at input delay at output addition at input delay addition at output so this is this difference equation completely characterize the LDI system so I can write 6.7 equation like 6.9 just moving all this output and inputs on the other side and final y of n is equal to this equation <clears throat> now I can say that this second term let's say this second term is equal to v of n it's like an intermediate output and then y of n is equal to summation of all the outputs plus v of n so if I do that I get direct form 1 okay if I do that I will get direct form 1 first implementing the zeros there is the either you can say if you implement zeros or you implement coefficients of input okay both are same thing implementing zeros or the coefficient of input or the coefficients of numerator you will get direct form 1 so just look at this equation we are first implementing v of n so how we are implementing v of n we are multiplying x of n with delay and coefficient bk so we are delaying the input and multiplying it with bk and then summing it and then we are adding this v of n to the output so let's move on to next slide and see how this happens so this is a block diagram of journal nth order difference equation you can see here we have the intermediate output v of n so how we are getting v of n x of n multiplying with b naught x of n getting delayed we will get x of n minus 1 x of n minus 1 and multiplied by b1 then x of n minus 1 getting delayed we get x of n minus 2 until we will get x of n minus m after delaying it and then we will multiply it with b m and finally all of these added up to get v of n now on the other side we have to delay y of n we'll delay y of n we will get y of n minus 1 multiplied by a1 we'll further delay it and we will get y of n minus 2 we will multiply it with a2 and then so on we will finally delay y of n minus 2 to y of n minus m because it is nth order and the input is mth order and then we will finally add up so implementing b naught first or coefficients of input first this is called direct form 1 df1 structure we will talk about this df1 later on as well so this is how we implement a nth order difference equation first of all implementing the b naught or the input coefficient then implementing the output or a coefficients so let's move on to next slide so this structure is basically df2 structure why this is df2 structure because i can clearly see here that we are implementing a's first and then we are implementing b's first we are implementing poles first then we are implementing zeros or we are implementing coefficients of denominator first then we are implementing the coefficients of numerator so uh, by little arrange, rearrangement of block diagram in figure 6.3 we can get this so here you can see that w of n this point we are using separate delays we can also combine these delays as well so df2 is basically canonical form we call it canonical because order of the system if we have a second order system we will use only two delays okay so when the order of the system is equal to number of delays used it is called canonical structure so in next slide few slide i will tell you about how we can implement this structure what is the mathematics behind getting this kind of a direct form 2 structure so let's move on to next slide the only thing you need to remember at this point is that whenever we implement poles first or coefficient of denominator first it is called direct form 2 structure so the general form of 
rational system function was this as we have seen in previous equations so if I break this different rational system function into two form I can say that this is h2 and this one is h1 okay so if I implement h2 first I am going to implement the direct form 2 if I implement h1 first I am going to implement the direct form 1 so depending upon the arrangement for example here if you see we are implementing v of z is equal to h1 into x of z so what we are doing everybody knows that y of z is equal to h of z into x of z and we have broken down h into h1 of z into and h2 of z so if i multiply h1 with x of z so you can see that h1 has input terms so input will be implemented first so here you can see that input is multiplied with the h1 and then finally y of z is equal to what y of z will be equal to h2 multiplied by this okay so because we have solved this this is v of z then we have to multiply h2 of z okay so let me rub and just clearly write it again for you what we are doing here so y of z is equal to h of z into x of z then we have y of z is equal to h2 of z h1 of z x of z these two multiplication will give you v of z and then finally we will multiply it with h2 of z so here we are doing this so h2 of z has this factors denominator factor so we'll multiply it with denominator okay so now here we can see that h of z is equal to h1 of z h2 of z i can simplify it for you so like if i write simply v of z is equal to summation bk z raised power minus k x of z you can do it yourself by taking the inverse so taking the inverse of this it will give me v of n is equal to summation k is equal to 0 to m bk x of n minus k so you can see here we are implementing the inputs first now if i write if i write y of z is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus k is equal to 1 to n and z raised power minus k with a k into v of z now let me rub this side because i can use this side so just taking the first solve this so y of z minus summation a k z raised power minus k y of z is equal to v of z summation k is equal to 1 to n now taking the inverse it will give you y of n minus summation a k y of n minus k is equal to v of z k is equal to 1 to n and then finally you can write y of n is equal to v of n plus summation a k y of n minus k k is equal to 1 to n so by doing this we will get direct form 1 so these are the two equations 1 and 2 that you need to implement so we'll need a common point v of n as you have seen in figure 6.3 just go to 6.3 and check that out we have common point v of n and then at v of n how we are implementing v of n 
we are multiplying x of n with v naught, x of n minus 1 with b1, x of n minus 2 with b2, and up to x of n minus m with bm. We will get v of n. And on the other side, what we will do? We will multiply y of n with y of n minus 1 with a1 because it, there is no naught. There is no a naught because the summation is starting from k is equal to 1. So we will multiply y of n minus 1 with a1, y of n minus 2 with a2, y of n minus n with a n and finally adding with v of n. So that is how we can implement direct form 1. So if you want to implement direct form 2, we have to do shift between h1 and h2. So you can see here in equation 6.13 there is a little bit shift here h2 was this and h1 was this here we have shifted h1 is this and h2 is this so kind of the same thing we have just changed the location of h1 and h2 okay so let's move on to next slide and where i will drive it for you what if we use h2 with x of z and h1 with v of c so let's move on to next slide so here you can see that we are using h2 with x of z so h2 have denominator portion so we are going to implement this a's first so we are multiplying it with x of z okay so we get w of z now we will use this w of z to multiply it with h1 of z so finally we will multiply it with inputs so i'm going to solve this for you here w of z is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus summation a k z is power minus k x of z k is equal to 1 to n now cross multiply we will get w of z minus summation a k w of z z raised power minus k equal to x of z k is equal to 1 to n now taking the inverse z transform we will get w of n is equal to i'm going to take this negative side on the other side summation a k w of n minus k plus x of n k is equal to 1 to n this is the equation that is written here and if i take the inverse of this y of z you will get y of n summation k 0 to m b k z raised power minus k this will be b k w of n minus k so we are going to implement this equation so you can see here that we need delays here for w of n minus k and we need w of n minus k here so how you can implement this we will take a common point and we will call it w of n and then we will use a delay z raised power minus 1 z raised power minus 1 so first we will implement so you can see that we need x of n so if this is x of n x of n will be added with a1 and delay so we will use a1 here then we will use a2 here and on the output side if this is y of n we will use b1 here b0 here and b2 here and all of them added together these are summation sign okay so and this will keep on going till m and this will go till n so here you can see that this is direct form 2 because we are first implementing denominator a's and then we are implementing b's 
So let's move on to next slide and see a clear picture of direct form 2 as well. So you can read out the theory as it says that the block diagram of figure 6.3 and 6.4 have several important differences. In 6.3, zeros of H of Z represented by H1 are implemented first, followed by the poles represented by H2. In figure 6.4, the poles are implemented first, followed by the zeros. Likewise, an implementation with minimum number of delay element is commonly referred to as canonic form. The non-canonic block diagram in figure 6.3 is referred to as direct form 1. Okay, so a canonic form where we are using minimum number of delays. Direct form 2 or canonic form is shown in figure 6.5. So let's see figure 6.5 in next slide. So we use n plus m delays in direct form 1. Whereas we use m or n delays in direct form 2. So direct form 1 and direct form 2 implementation of this LTS system. So, if we want to implement with direct form 1, first we implement zeros. So, you can convert this in difference equation form. y of z divided by x of z is equal to 1 plus 2 z inverse 1 minus 1.5 z raised power minus 1 plus 0.9 z raised power minus 2. So, we get to know y of z minus 1.5 y of z, z raised power minus 1, plus 0.9 y of z, z raised power minus 2, is equal to x of z, plus 2x of z, z raised power minus 1. Now taking the inverse e transform, we will get y of n, is equal to x of n, plus 2x of n minus 1, plus 1.5 y of n minus 1, plus sorry minus 0.9 y of n minus 2 so implementing the direct form 1 here you can see we have y of n y of n is multi x of n sorry x of n is multiplied with 1 because b naught is 1 then we are using delay so this is x of n minus 1 x of n minus 1 is multiplied with 2 you can see here we have 2. This is V of n here. Now we are delaying output. So this is output delayed by multiplied by 1.5. So if we have one thing you need to remember is that whenever implementing the rational system function, if we have minus here, we will use positive. Otherwise, if you are converting it to difference equation and you are using Y of n equal to rest of the term you can see here we have positive so we are always going to use positive here now delaying it further and using minus 0.9 we have plus so we will use negative so adding all these together we will get direct form 1 whereas in direct form 2 we will use common delay so we can see the order of the system it's 2 so we will use 2 delays and we will implement denominator first so 1.5.9 both are added together and then we are using numerator on the other side so this is direct form 2 this is your w of n as I've told you so you have to implement first the denominator portion followed by the numerator portion so just a flip of this above flip of above okay so that's it for direct form 1 and direct form 2 let's move on to next slide so signal flow graph representation of linear constant coefficient difference equation a signal flow graph representation of difference equation is essentially the same as the block diagram representation so the signal flow graph is just like the block diagram except for few notations. Here we are not going to use addition sign. We are not going to use the delay blocks. Rather we will use branches and nodes. So this is a node. This is a node. And rest of these are branches. So we are going to use 
branches and nodes so branches are connected with the help of nodes now this is a signal flow graph with source and sync node this is a source node the source node does not have any entering node okay there is no node entering in the source whereas this is a sync node okay so nothing is leaving from this sync node everything is entering in the sync node so we have nodes we have branches we have source node and sync nodes so if i for example if i need to write what is entering in w1 of n i can write it w1 of n is equal to just look whatever is entering in w1 of n so if you look at x of n is entering in w of n plus what is else is entering in w of 1 of n b2 w2 of n is entering and finally a w2 of n is entering it's not b2 it's just b so at this node if you see x of n is entering w2 a is entering and w2 b is entering in this node likewise if i talk about y of n in y of n x of n d is entering and w2 e is entering okay so we have to use the additions and we have to use the multiplications so let's move on to next slide so these are the equation that i have just told you like what is entering in y of n what is entering in w2 of n what is entering in w of 1 of n so if you go back we can see that in w1 of n node we have x of n we have a w2 of n and b w2 of n whereas in w2 of n we just have one thing that is entering is c w1 of n whereas in y1 of n we have d x of n e w2 of n so this is the block diagram representation of first order system why we are calling it first order system because it's just have z inverse if i write the diff system function i can write h of z is equal to h of z is equal to just by looking at this i can write b naught plus b1 z inverse divided by 1 minus a z inverse this is the sy rational system function whose whose structure is represented here and it is represented in the direct form two form because a is implemented first and then we have a common delay and b's are implemented afterwards so this is the first order direct form two structure whereas this corresponding flow signal graph is we do not have any delay branch here we do not have any addition here we do not have any addition the additions are replaced by nodes the delays are delays are replaced by branches so it's exactly the same this is same but this is signal flow graph signal flow graph and this is block diagram in signal flow graph we do not have any arrangement we just follow the path so let's move on to next slide and let's see how we can solve this signal flow graph to get the system function because from structure it is very easy to write this system function but what if we have a signal flow graph that is non not in direct form one or direct form two shape how we can get the system function from that so let's move on to next slide so what you have to do you have to write the node equation so there are w1 w2 w3 and w4 and w5 these are five nodes for which we have to write the equation so these are the five nodes and then finally you have to eliminate w1 w2 w3 w4 because if we have to find out the system function we just need x of n and y of n or we need y of c or x of z so we can simply eliminate this if you substitute like we can write w2 is equal to w1 just substitute this equation here 
we will get W2 and then substitute W3 here and then substitute B0 W2 B1 and then substitute W4 here so we have kind of eliminate the F variables now we just have W2 X of N and Y of N eliminating W2 here we will get only Y of N and X of N which was desired so we have to eliminate the nodes now this is signal flow graph that is not in standard direct form 1 direct form 2 I cannot write its H of Z directly by looking at this graph so what we have to do we have to define nodes you can define as many nodes as you want so this is W1 this is W2 this is W3 and this is W4 defining nodes will simplify your equation but if you define more nodes you will have to eliminate those nodes variable as well so we know that w1 what is entering in w1 just look at x of minus x of n is entering in w1 and w4 is entering in w1 what is entering in w2 you can see alpha w1 is entering in w2 likewise what is entering in w3 you can see w2 and x of n entering in w3 likewise what is entering in w4 only w3 z raised power minus 1 means delay of w3 that is w3 and minus 1 is entering in w4 and finally w2 and w4 are entering in y of n so you just need now what you need to do you need to eliminate w1 w2 w3 w4 so substitute w2 here w4 here let's move on to next slide so as addition and division is not possible in time domain what I have done here we have taken the Z transform we have taken the Z transform of the previous equations so we can eliminate W1 and WZ by the set of equation by substituting 6.21A into 6.21B so substitute this here and substitute W3 here and then finally substitute 2 here and substitute this here so this is the equation of W2 W4 and then finally substituting W2 and W4 here this is W2 this is W4 we'll substitute here and here and then we can eliminate W2 and W4 as well so this is the elimination of W2 and W4 we will get Y of C is equal to this term into X of C this term so after simplification we will get H of C is equal to this term after simplification we will get the system function to be this now from this system function I can implement direct form 1 as well as direct form 2 and I can also find the impulse response so impulse response is very simple just break the system function 1 minus alpha z inverse minus alpha divided by 1 minus alpha z inverse so there is a delay so alpha raised to power n minus 1 u of n minus 1 minus alpha dot alpha raised to power n u of n so alpha 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 n plus 1 so this is it okay now this is direct form 1 signal flow graph so first we are going to implement the first we are going to implement the this thing we are going to implement the numerator thing so x of n multiplied with alpha minus alpha then we have a delay this thing then the output implementing the y of minus 1 and then alpha so if you get confused with this thing you can simply write y of c divided by x of z is equal to z raised power minus 1 minus alpha 
divided by 1 minus alpha z inverse. Now cross multiply where you will get y of z minus alpha y of z z to the power minus 1. Let me clear it for you and write it again. You just need to convert this into difference equation. So writing the difference equation y of z divided by x of z is equal to 1 z inverse minus alpha divided by 1 minus alpha z inverse cross multiplying y of z minus alpha y of z z inverse equal to x of z z inverse minus alpha x of z now taking the inverse z transform y of n and taking rest of the terms on the other side x of n minus 1 minus alpha x of n plus alpha y of n minus 1 so you can see here this is x of n minus 1 this term this is minus alpha x of n this is minus alpha x of n plus alpha y of n minus 1 so this is y of n minus 1 into alpha so this is direct form 1 because we are using two separate delays for input and output so now please go through the derivation of direct form 1 direct form 2 see the difference between structures how we use the blocks there and the difference between the signal flow graph thank you very much